Now, let's follow the flow of gas from a cylinder through the components to the engine. From the cylinder through the cylinder shutoff valve, high pressure gas goes to the FMM. The FMM houses all the Agility CNG control components, such as the regulator, high pressure filter, and various valves. The high pressure regulator reduces the gas pressure from 3600 PSI to approximately 125 PSI. Gas at 125 PSI leaves the regulator and goes to the low pressure filter, which is not part of the agility system. A hose goes from the low pressure filter, routing gas to the engine. At the engine, an internal regulator further reduces the gas pressure. Now, let's take a closer look at the features Agility offers on an FMM in a typical system. The red handle is the quarter turn shutoff valve. This shuts off the fuel from the FMM to the engine. You would close this valve when you want to work in the engine compartment, like when removing the cylinder heads, changing spark plugs, or anything along those lines. You don't want to have any gas in the engine bay for that kind of work. Remember, never adjust, remove, or tighten a fitting or connector on a fuel system that is under pressure. Be sure to review segment seven, depressurizing the system for more information. Next is the fast high volume fill receptacle. You can use this receptacle to fill your vehicle with a high volume nozzle. This is the NGV-1 fuel receptacle, which is a standard fueling receptacle found across the U.S. This is the defueling receptacle. It permits the fuel and the cylinders to be removed when necessary. Here is the high pressure gauge. When all of the valves are in the open position, this gauge tells you the pressure in the cylinders. And this is the low pressure gauge, which tells you what the gas pressure is coming out of the regulator and going to the engine. Nominal pressure here is 125 PSI. Now we're going to take you inside the fuel management module. As you can see, we've moved off the vehicle to a bench top for a better view inside. Here are the regulator coolant port in and the coolant port out. These ports bring hot coolant from the engine to the regulator bowl and then back to the engine. The coolant cycles inside the bowl, keeping the regulator warm. Without the warm coolant, the regulator could freeze up as the gas expands, passing through the regulator. These are the pressure regulator and the pressure relief valve. The pressure regulator has its own pressure relief valve. This is the only pressure relief valve in the system that is actually activated by pressure. If there is too much gas pressure exiting the regulator, over 200 PSI, this valve will relieve that pressure, then automatically reset. Next is the wiring harness, and all wires are identified as to their function. Here we see the manifold bleed valve and manifold. The manifold is a hub where the gas is distributed to various places in the system. The quarter turn manual shutoff valve is the red handled one we showed earlier on the front panel. This is the defuel valve. Here is the check valve to prevent backflow. And these are the high pressure filter housing, bowl, and drain plug. We will discuss how to service this filter in segment eight of this presentation. This is the solenoid valve. Safety codes require a solenoid gas shutoff valve that is activated by the vehicle ignition key. Finally, this is the high pressure fuel line coming in from the cylinders. Okay. Now we're going to take a closer look at a different type of FMM called an integrated unit that we introduced you to earlier in this presentation. This design is used for some side rail mounted systems. Notice that the tubing and routing are a little different, but it uses the same components as before, just in different locations. It includes the red handled quarter turn shutoff valve and the high volume fill receptacle, just as on the previous FMM. Here is the NGV-1 fuel receptacle and the high pressure gauge that shows the pressure in the cylinders. And in here is the low pressure gauge. This gauge shows the gas pressure, leaving the regulator and flowing toward the engine and the defueling receptacle. Notice that with this style, the low pressure gauge and defueling receptacle are inside the FMM. 
If you ever see anything about a CNG system that looks questionable, or you are in any doubt, contact your local Agility service provider or Agility before you proceed any further. You'll find Agility's contact information in segment 12. Now that you have a feel for the overall system and system components, let's take a closer look at the various procedures you may perform when working with a CNG system.